الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي اضعف ما حميده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضى سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا اله الا الله والله اكبر ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله الا بالله العلي العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم اجعلنا دعاة اليك والى رسولك اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ليس البر ان تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من امن بالله واليوم الاخر والملائكه والملائكه والكتاب والنبيين واتى المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وبن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب واقام الصلاه واتى الزكاه والموفون بعهدهم اذا عاهدوا والصابرين في الباساء والضراء وحين الباس اولئك الذين صدقوا واولئك هم المتقون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصبر نصف الايمان صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق الرسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين ومن الشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين indeed all praises are for allah we praise allah nashkuruhu and we thank him we glorify allah we thank allah for the boons and favors that he have bestowed upon us those that we recognize those that we fail to recognize we thank him for islam we thank allah for the quran we thank allah for this title being called a muslim We thank Allah for granting us with hidayah and guidance on the straight path. We thank Allah for bringing us and for placing us in the best of all ummah, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We thank Allah for khatam an-nabiyyin, for granting to us the seal of the prophets, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If we were to try to count the favors of Allah, we will never ever be able to do so we thank allah for sending muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the way of life which is known as islam to proclaim it over all other ways walau kariya al mushrikun walau kariya al kafirun even though the polytheists and the disbelievers may detest it we testify to allah's oneness and we testify to the risalat and the prophethood of his last messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam indeed my dear brothers and my dear sisters to be from amongst the abrar to me from amongst the righteous servants of allah those people who possess the quality of bir those people who possess the quality of righteousness allah taala lays it out very beautifully in the quran explaining to us who are these people what they are engaged in and what kind of ibadat they do for the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala so as the weeks went by we started to explain about what is bir and just to recap it is not about turning our faces towards east or west no it is more than that it is to bring iman in allah first and foremost the first pill of islam to bring iman in allah in the last day to bring iman in the prophets in the book to bring iman in the angels this is a form of righteousness 
This is a form of bir. This is one part. It is to give your wealth to those who are on the path, the travelers, the wayfarers, the poor, the needy, the masakin, even though you would like it more for your own self. It is to fulfill our contract that we had made with Allah. Do not break promises to, to keep the amanat and the trust. Bir also, today inshallah we'll be seeing, it is to perform salat and it is to give zakat. And to, to top it off, every single aspect in the life of the believer, when it comes to ibadah, every single aspect in the life of a believer, it requires this quality. You know what they say? They say you save the best for last. Allah ends this surah, this, this ayah. Allah ends it by capping off what it takes for all these things. To bring iman and to believe in the last day and all the things. Allah brings the quality that is required by every believer. And today, we find that this is the one quality that most of us we lack. But this is the quality that completes half of our feet. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it. As sabru nisful iman. Patience is half of your iman. Everything in life, it begins, they say, at home. And even at home, when a man gets married to a woman, a woman gets married to a man, the first quality that is required in regards to this marriage, in making this marriage work, it is a quality of patience. When we stand before Allah in Salat, we require to have patience. Whatever we do, if you have a business, patience. If you're experiencing problems, patience. Every aspect in the life of the believer, patience is required. When it comes to certain things in Islam, patience becomes fawd. It becomes compulsory. Salat, for example, to not have patience in Salat, it's a sin. We must have patience when we say Allahu Akbar. Patience must be exercised in Salat. When we fast in the month of Ramadan, patience is found. It is found to have patience in Ramadan. Subhanallah. When we perform Hajj, it is found to have patience. Those of you who would have been there, you will know. If you don't have patience, to perform Hajj is best you kind of hold back. Because if you lose patience there, you could corrupt your Hajj. That's how bad it is. So this quality, it is a quality that is required from every individual in every aspect of life. Every aspect. There are three people or three categories of people when it comes to patience. And it is mentioned that there are three types of patient people. The first one, they are those people, they take pleasure when any problems affect them, when any sickness affect them, when any hardships, hardships fall upon them. Whatever the calamity, whatever the trial, whatever the test, you know what they do? They laugh it out. Subhanallah. They bear it with that type of patience that it doesn't matter to them. There are some, the second category, when they become sick, they will not complain. But at the same time, they will not be glad that I became sick. They will not take pleasure in that, but they will bear patience on the sickness. They will not take pleasure in a loss in business, but they will not complain. But they will bear it with patience. They fail the exam. They will not take pleasure in that, that this happened because of the will of Allah. But they will bear it with patience. That is the second category. And then there is a third category, that there are those, they are patient over things that they know, no man has control over. So you put a seed in the ground, 
and you plant crops and you expect that these crops will grow. But who has control over that? It starts to grow before you can even harvest. What happens? The rain comes and destroys it. It destroys it all. As we grow in life, we will realize if you have to take a book at a certain age and read, you start to see blurry. It's because your eyesight starts to get dim. Now you have to go and get glasses. Some people even lose their eyesight. They can't see. This is not in the control of nobody. So people, they bear patience on that. Sometimes, based on our old age, when we used to run, when we used to walk brisk, now our health is deteriorating. We have no control over that. But we remain patient. These are the three categories of patience. A woman, a woman in the times of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very old woman, she lay down at night, and in her mind, she's planning, what is it I can do to annoy this man? What is it I can do to make him hurl abuses at me? What is it I can do to make him quarrel and get him angry? She's thinking this line on her bed. And the thought comes to her mind. I'm going to heap up all the garbage in the morning. I'm going to wait for that moment. I'm going to collect all the rubbish. Put it in something, in some container. And from the time I see him coming, I'm going to empty it on him. Waiting, looking, anticipating. And there comes the man. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In his flashing white garb. With his shining looking face. Walking on the street. That this woman is planning for. For him. As he reaches. Under her doorsteps. Subhanallah. All the garbage. Is upon him. He just shakes it off. And he walks. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Guess what? The next day, he did the same thing. He walked on the same path. He faced the same problem. All the garbage on top of him. Shakes it off and walks away. It happened and it happened and it happened again and again and again. Until one day, we know the story, he didn't feel anything. He goes up, knocks on the door, only to find or to hear this woman. Who is it? Do you need anything? I am not so well. Can I enter? He just that permission is given. He goes in, gives her a glass of water, attends to her, take care of, took care of her until this woman looks at him, begins to smile. Feeling sad, feeling remorseful, regretting what she had done to him and accepting Islam at the end of it all. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would have been easy for him to take another road. It would have been easy for him not to walk on that path that this woman was throwing rubbish on him every day. What you would have done, what I would have done, somebody threw rubbish on us. We might have heard some abuses, yeah. But you think we're going to pass back there the next day? No. Hear the words on the lips of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I did not want to disappoint this old woman. So I continued to walk down the same street every day. This woman was expecting me to come for her to do this act. I didn't want to bring about any disappointment to her. Subhanallah. This is the first category of people that we are speaking about. The Quran, it tells us in the Quran, Say, O Muhammad, say to your people, O my servants, O my slaves, who have iman, to fear your Lord. Be afraid of your Lord. Lilladina ahsanu fi hadihi dunya hasana. And let them know for those who do good, for them will be good in this world. 
Anybody who do good, they will find rewards in this world. Allahu Akbar. Wa ardallahi wasi'a. And let them know if any harm has been done to them, any injustice has been done to them. The earth of Allah is spacious. You can move. Do hijrah. Migrate. Go somewhere else where you won't be faced with any problems. Innama yuwaffa sabiruna ajrahum bi ghayri hisab. Allah says that most certainly, most certainly, only those who are patient shall receive their reward in full without having to account, without having to give any reckoning whatsoever. And those who are patient here means those who take pleasure when harm is, is being inflicted on them. Because they know this is coming from Allah. When they face with a problem, this is from Allah. When they face with a sickness, this is from Allah. Ayub alayhi salam. Ayub alayhi salam. Allah blessed him with so many things. But then Allah Ta'ala started to take it out from him. Allah started to put sicknesses on him. Allah started to take back the wealth. Allah destroyed the home. Allah, he destroyed the children. So many different things. And guess what? He remained firm and patient. He took it with a smile, as they say. Allah says, for them, for those type of people, no accountability. The hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, 70,000 of my followers. It comes in the narration. That the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, it was shown to me. One prophet passed by. One prophet passed by. And with him was one person in his community. Only one person accepted his message. Another person, another prophet passed by. And two people accepted his message from a whole community. He says another one passed by and he had a group with him. And then a, a fourth one passed by and guess what? He had none. He said, then I looked towards the horizon and I saw this huge crowd. And I said to myself, ah, this is my ummah. So much people have filled the horizon. I said, ah, this is my ummah. Only to be told that this is the ummah of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Walking together with Musa alayhi salam. Then it was said to him, Unzur, look. He says, I lifted my head. And I looked. And I saw the horizon fill. It was said to me again, look hakaza, look hakaza. Look on this side, look on this side. And every direction I looked, I saw people coming in abundance. Subhanallah, who are these people? They are from your ummah. And I was told, 70,000 from amongst them, 70,000 from amongst them will enter paradise without any reckoning at all. Man whom, who are they? It was told to the Prophet sallallahu they are those who are patient and rely absolutely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in happiness as well as in adversary when things are not so good. They rely only in Allah when they are healthy or when they are struck with any kind of sickness. Only on Allah they rely upon. They don't seek any kind of enchantments, any kind of amulets and charms and witchcraft and sorcery. They don't seek to do that. You know, sometimes you have people, from the time you get sick, they carry by somebody and all kinds of things they start to recite on you. Not Islamic things. Then you have some people, they rely, they rely on a thing, long time they used to call it tabij. If I hear about tabij, the word is really taweez. It's an amulet they have and some Islamic things are written on it and they put it on to wear. Some wear it on their hands, some on their neck and they rely upon that. They put their trust on that. That is totally wrong. Because our trust and our reliance is upon Allah. Allah and Allah alone. So this, 
This type of patience the Quran is explaining here. Was sabirina fil ba'sa. Was sabirina fil ba'sa. I was dara. I was al ba's. Those pe people who remain patient when hardships afflict them. Those who remain patient when they are in the battlefield. Those who remain patient when sickness hit them. Those who remain patient when they lost wealth. When people are taken away from their families. Loss of wealth, loss of lives, lost in crops. They remain patient. Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ sabirin, Give glad tidings to them. Give glad tidings to them. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a woman. Very old. She's carrying her luggage. She's taking her luggage with her. He goes up to her. He takes the luggage from her head. And he starts to carry it with her. He asks her, Where are you going? Why is it that you are leaving? She says, I'm going away from the city. And I'm leaving the city. Why are you leaving this city? It is because I have heard about a magician in this city. He is, his name is Muhammad. <laughs> I have heard of a magician in this city. His name is Muhammad. Subhanallah. And on the way, nothing good to say about this man Muhammad. All the things you can think about. He is destroying the idols. He is destroying our gods. He is setting this thing apart. He is setting this thing apart. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this man is smiling. She says, when she has re reached a point of destination, he takes the luggage and he puts it down. She says, I noticed something about you young man. I noticed a very pleasant smile that you have. Not a word you uttered to me. And I noticed also that your sweat were very sweet scented. She says, before you leave, tell me what is your name? He says to her, I am the reason for you leaving the town. I am the reason for you leaving this city. I want us to think about that, you know. Think about you being the reason for a person to leave Islam. Some hurtful word you might have said to somebody. And that person left Islam. What kind of feeling you going to have about that? How would you feel to know that you insulted somebody, hurt somebody, you told somebody something that was not becoming of a Muslim and that person left the fold of Islam? Is it going to haunt you for the rest of your life? Or not? What about... If you didn't tell that person nothing. You didn't tell the person nothing. And that person just left Islam and they say it was because of you. The Prophet wasallam didn't say anything wrong, anything bad. Didn't preach anything at all that was contrary to this way of life. Or to the teachings of these people except... Do not worship that. Worship Allah. And this woman, she was leaving. What is he saying to her? I am the reason for you to leave this city. How much patience he had to bear to hear the things that this woman was saying about this man who she was walking with. What you and I would have done? Woman, you better carry your own thing. Yeah. You carry your own thing and you could leave if you want. He took it, he bore it, he listened to it. And at the end of it all, when he said to her, I am Muhammad. I am the person who is causing you to leave. This woman also became a Muslim. Allah says about these people who have this type of patience. These people who have this type of patience, ulaika ladina sadaku. It is they who are true to their words. They who are true to their words. That I am a person who have righteousness in my life. I am a person who understands what is bill. They are true. I am a person who understands that it takes patience to be a Muslim. 
I am a person who understands that every aspect of Islam requires patience. Whether it be family at home, whether it be the business, whether it be the children, whether it be in salat, whether it be in fasting, whether it be in hajj, whatever it takes, whether it be my health, whether it be my life, whatever it takes, it requires patience. Patience. Today, see the world. See the world and see what is happening in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will see how much we tolerate, how much patience we have when we are faced with a problem. You will see. Today, people are getting married sometimes within a day or two. Sometimes within a week or a month or a year. And that's the end. You know why? There is no patience. No patience. And we see it happening throughout the world. Allah is telling us, those people are true. When afflicted with calamity, in the Quran for itself, what is it saying? Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. Oh, you who claim to have Iman, seek Allah's help with patience and prayer. Because if you are praying and you have no patience in the prayer, that is not what Allah is speaking about. Allah is not speaking about that. Oh, you who believe, seek Allah's help in, with patience and prayer. Subhanallah. Don't say about those who are dead in the path of Allah that they are dead. Don't say that at all. بَلْ أَحْيَا They are alive. وَلَكِنْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ You can't understand, you can't perceive it. Then Allah says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ Know very well, we will test you with something of fear. وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالْثَمَرَاتِ We will test you with something of hunger. Not every day you will have food to eat. We will test you with the loss of life. We will test you with loss of wealth. We will test you with the loss of crops, your property, your business. We are going to test you with it. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says give glad tidings to those who remain patient. Give glad tidings, tidings to them. Alladina ida asobatuhum musiba. Those who when afflicted with calamity, those who when afflicted with any kinds of problems whatsoever, callu. What do they say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. From Allah we came. We have to go back to Allah. This is the reality. This is the reality. Every single day, something is happening new. Every affliction we are afflicted with, any calamity, this phrase of the Quran is to bring a reality in our hearts and our lives. To know what? That we came from Allah and we have to go back to Him. This is not only for when somebody dies. This is for when we are afflicted with any problems whatsoever. If you're walking out the door and you bounce your foot to, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Whatever happens to you that you don't like it, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Bring this phrase in your, in your vocabulary. Let it be part and parcel of your life so that you and me, we will understand that we came from Allah, we have to go back to Allah. Because today how we act, how we live, how we operate here, it's like we're not returning nowhere. We could say what we want, do what we want, tell people what we want. And subhanallah, no fear at all. Allah says, give glad tidings to those who have patience. Ula'ika alladheena sadaqu. Those who operate like this, they are true. And Allah ends with by saying, Wa ula'ika humul muttaqoon. They are the God-fearing ones. They are the God-fearing ones. How does the Quran begin for anybody? How does the Quran begin? After Surah Fatiha. Allah says, Thalikal kitabu la rayba fi. That is the book in which there is no doubt. Hudallil muttaqeen. The same word. 
guidance for those who are God fearing. All these qualities and traits in this ayat, Surah number 2, verse 177, read it. Allah is saying, when you possess all these things, then you are true to your word, you are God fearing. You belong to this category of people. Who are they? Inna al abrar la fi naim. The abrar, the righteous one, they will be in naim. They will be in the garden of felicity, the garden of bliss. Al al araikiyan zurun. They will be sitting on their thrones. They will be looking on what is taking place in in Jannah. How people are living in Jannah. Their thrones make of gold and silver. Made of rubies and pearls and diamonds. Sitting on thrones. Not that chair like what that brother sitting on and what those brothers sitting on. No. Made of gold and silver and pearls and rubies. Allahu Akbar. Ta'arifu fi wujuhihim nadratan na'im. You will see on their faces. Nadratan na'im. Brightness. Brilliant, gleaming faces. Allahu Akbar. Ta'rifu fi wujuhihim nadrat al-na'im. Yusqawna min rahikim maktoom. Now they are sitting on their throne. They will be given a drink to drink. A drink will be given to them. Khitamuhu misk. The seal, when you pop the seal of that drink, what smell you get in? Not no old oak, no. Not no grand old pa, no. Musk. Musk. Kitamuhu musk. When you pop the seal, it's the smell of musk. Allah says, Wafi dalika falyatana fasil mutana fisun. You want to beat down your brother? You want to beat down your sister? You want to compete with this one for that? You want to compete with that one for that? Allah says, For that. Let those who wish to compete, let them compete for that. That Jannatun Naim, that throne, that drink. Allah say, compete for that. Subhanallah. Wa mizajuhu min tasneem. Subhanallah. This river, it's known as tasneem. Pure. Wow. Non alcoholic wine. Rivers of milk and honey and. Clear crystal water, not like blue water or something. No, crystal clear. The water in Jannah from the spring of the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One sip is gonna quench your thirst. You're never gonna become thirsty again. Allahu Akbar. Wa mizaju woman tasneem ayna yashrabu bi al mukarrabun. Such a spring, such a fountain, only those who are close to Allah will be able to drink from it. Al Mukarrabun. Who are those? Al Abrar. Al Abrar. Those who practice bir, those who practice sabr, those who practice patience, those who understood what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant to remain patient on all circumstances. Allahu Akbar. So here it is. In a nutshell, if we want Allah, know that Allah Ta'ala already have us. Allah has already prepared for us. Allah has prepared for us. Like how you prepare when you are marrying your sons and daughters, and you're waiting now for the barat to come. You're prepared and waiting. Allah is already prepared, has already prepared his Jannah for us. It's only now for us to go. It's only for us to choose the right path. It's only for us to choose to do the good things so that we can reach on the other side with aman, with security, and with itminan, with peace. The ball is in our court. You can play with it and score, or you can just play with it and keep on playing. Don't even think about scoring. The choice is yours, the choice is mine. Allah has given us the code, Allah has given us the guide. The code is the Quran, the guide is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Put these two together and we will go to Jannah. Simple as it is. May Allah give us the tawfiq, may he give us the ability, may he show us truth as truth, falsehood as falsehood, and may Allah guide us towards the truth. Wal akhir da'wana, and alhamdulillah, hirabbil alameen.